Hey guys, Boy here, and this is Things I've Learned with Sumail's Invoker in 719. As you all know, I started a full Invoker guide, and I think that featuring an entire Invoker replay before following up with it will be interesting for you and for me to solidify my knowledge about the hero. By the way, I really appreciate all of you that tune in to watch me cast the Dreamling Miner. I was quite surprised with the number of people, and although I'm still struggling to find real casting gigs, I appreciate all your effort. I already talked about the Quaswax laning stage in the first video, so I won't talk too much about it. If you check the game, you will you'll see that Invoker was the Nymph pick, and the Pugna pick was an effort on a Dire player to counter Sumail. Yet Dota buffs AI says that Sumail wins the lane. The first thing I want to mention is the mango he's carrying here. This item is super important so that you can defend yourself and play aggressive. This hero doesn't have decent mana and regen early on, and the burst of mana is super important. One thing that Pugnas at level 5 constantly do is the Nether Blast after attacking the range creep once, that ensures that they will get the last hit, and Sumail, thanks to the mango he was carrying, is able to use the animation of that spell against the Pugner. Invoker had 300 mana, and after the EMP lands, he has 200. What happened here is that effectively Sumail used 100 mana to take half of a hero's HP and 250 of its mana. Sumail took some creep damage, yes, but he has way more HP region than the Pugna, and since the little Skelly boy got greedy, wanting to take his clarity away, Radiant gets a kill on him. Usually, as an invoker, you cannot just try and dive a Pugna with your Tornado EMP combo after he's level 6, because unless there are creeps attacking him, he can turn around on you because the cold snap will stop proccing as long as he uses the life drain after the stun. In this case, since the Phoenix was there waiting for a long time, Sumail knew he could go for this and kills the Pugna again. This is why the Quaswex invoker is so good. Pugna is squishy, bursty, he depends on channeling spells, and he gets punished hard against invokers, two stuns and the mana drain. Sumail was looking for Terrorblade in the jungle when he spots Pugna TP in bottom. While Invoker really benefits from the urn, Quaswex Invoker farms super slow. He doesn't punish towers very well, so this is a great time to fight, since he is already level 8 and has a lot of wax learned. Note how he places the EMP slightly behind the path of Retreat for Dire. He keeps on attacking with the wax charges and kills the Tiny without committing the cold snap to see if he can get it on the Pugna. Look how he attack moves and almost solo kills the hero with only cold snap. This hero loves fights, he drains 300 mana from the Pugna here, meaning Pugna lost 600. Invoker's control not only destroys Pugna, but having the ability to remove so much mana early on out of a hero that relies heavily on it hinders their power spikes, while Invoker just KOs infinitely since you will transition to Exhort at some point. While you don't farm nearly as fast as the normal Invoker, your investment in Quaswex makes you able to almost never go back to base, allowing you to be ahead in experience, which is something that Invoker loves. Just look how he sends us four back to the base after he already died once, while Sumail can just go back to the lane, since once he gets there, he'll be full HP as long as he walks with Quas. Urn is one of your biggest power spikes in the game, but before we talk about it, I want to talk about the transition point of Quaswex. Pretty much all pro players start learning Exhort at level 10. It is mostly a math thing, for instance, if you check Cold Snap, the max damage you can deal with it at level 1 is 28. You get 70 at level 2, which is more than 100%, then 126, which is almost 100%. So the rate that the spells increase are awesome, but they temper after level 4 Quas and level 5 Wex. By learning Exhort, you open up a lot of spells you did not have, and you even benefit from those early points in Quaswex, in skills like Alacri, Ice Wall, Meteor, and etc. But there's one more thing that we will discuss later. This hero is all about using the urn charges with Cold Snap to be able to get kills. So usually you stop farming once you get the item, but you need to get charges to start being able to solo kill heroes, and that is a little hard, especially if he doesn't have vision of other things happening around the map. Another reason level 10 is a good transition point is that with 5 Wax and 4 Quas, he almost doesn't spend any mana to reliably drain 400 mana from the Pugna while also dealing 400 damage. As long as the target you go for is facing you and you place the EMP behind them, you will have enough time on most heroes to pop the spell unless they run towards you, but then you're probably getting the kill anyways.
As you can see, even though the tower was pushing and he could maybe get it, Sumeo rotates bottom. This hero doesn't pressure tower as well, but Sumeo also didn't want it to start a fight since there's so much counter initiator shown on Dire. With this fight happening already, he can just go there. And Tornado EMP is always a good way to start a fight if more than one target is present, as 4 dodges the tornado, but even then, with Cold Snap, Sumeo gets its first kill. One thing to mention is that as Quasvex Invoker, you're 99% of the times forbidden to use Urn on yourself. Not only your HP region is already great, the power of an Urn charge is insane. As Sumeo pushes bottom, he sees the Pugna with this ward, and since he walked to the fight, he has a TP ready. This is one of the many benefits of this hero, since he's so fast, with face boots and wax, you can get to fights without committing TPs, and then you can rotate to seemingly safe spaces for the enemy, getting kills on them. He TPs from the fog, does not show, turns to Quas to get into the fight healthy, and then knowing that it's nighttime, he doesn't cast the cold snap straight away. He casts Alacrity on himself, turns to Wax, only uses cold snap when he's in attack range, and only uses the face boots after all of that, so he can keep attack moving onto the Pugna. Note that he never committed Tornado EMP, not only because the Tornado is there to dispel the self decrepify in case Pugna goes for it, but because it's better to save the Tornado EMP for more targets. Cold snap also has a shorter cooldown, and it's usually safer to be committed. With that, Sumeo already has his Spirit Vassal, takes the tower, and here, since he has one spell on cooldown and the Shadow Shaman for lockdown, he goes for the EMP and then Cold Snap plus Urn always. Even though Sumeo has been fighting, a lot of his mana is still ready for combos and he is full HP. And that is the beauty of this hero, he's very active and he has very short downtime. Eventually, this fight starts brewing in Radiant's jungle, while Sumeo has no Spirit Vessel charges. You can already see that the Sunstrike is one of the spells that Sumeo constantly casts. One of the reasons Plasvex also starts transitioning at around level 10 is that it allows you to have have Max Exor and Cataclysm at level 20. You will spend 7 Exor charges and 3 talents to get to that power spike. And it really matters because Cataclysm is just one of the best abilities in the game, period. Anyways, while Tornado EMP is nice, when you're full mana, using the skill doesn't have that much benefit, so Cold Snap and Tornado are definitely the spells that Sumeo uses the most at this stage of the game. One thing you see constantly is Invokers playing the Quaswax Invoker Gankarino with Ghostwalk. While Ghostwalk can be used for ganks and is used, I think it's overused quite a bit, especially in the early game, especially when you're going for the correct Quaswax Invoker build. You're indeed strong, but if you don't have an item like Orchid or Side of Vice or Eggs, you're sacrificing one entire spell to your gank, so that is 33% less spells, which very often at this stage could mean you're not getting the kill. You also don't have the spell to disengage anymore, and in fact, since you only have 5 points of wax, you're only 10% faster on that form, but you cannot use your face boots, which is almost your speed anyways. So Mayo never ganked with Ghostwalk at this stage, but he did rotate and try to find kills constantly, and very rarely jungle. He finds Tiny here, and again, look how he commits the Alacrity before Cold Snap, and only uses the Yarn plus Cold Snap after being attack range, and he gets a kill, with only the two spells. He has Vision of Magnus top, so even though he has no high ground vision here, he goes for the Pugna because he already committed the life drain. He can use a tornado to try and save the Shaman, fails, but even then, they can get that kill. Necro beautifully uses the Use Scepter onto the Shadow Demon to get the Reaper Sight, and since he committed a decent amount of mana, Sumeo finally uses EMP, getting a double kill for the Necro. Not only that, Magnus and Terrorblade are still showing top, so look at the dive he goes for. Since Tiny is running away, this time he's forced to commit a Cold Snap plus Spirit Vessel before being in attack range. And note how he closes the gap and attacks with Wax, but once the Cold Snap is over and he starts to take damage, he uses the Quas and one Exhort instance while he gets the kill with the Sun Strike and disengages. Pretty crisp. This is one of the few times Sumeo jungle because his eggs was about to get ready. Another thing worth mentioning is the level 10 talent that he learns at level 17. The lift duration talent is quite polemic. While it looks way better than the Meteor damage, it really changes the way that you play Invoker, and a lot of the old players don't seem to believe it's worth the effort, and it also changes the way your allies play around the Tornado, which means that timing spells get super awkward and can even lose you a game. I can see a scenario where the Tornado cooldown reduction talent at level 25 gets buffed, and then you have almost a zero cooldown Tornado with Ocarine Core, 
more since your lift duration is bigger. But to be honest, late game EMPs get super awkward since you cannot set them up normally anymore. You have to wait until you cast the combo, but if you're 100% new to Invoker, maybe try it out and see what happens. It's not that the Meteor Talon is really good, it's just that both are kinda meh and the Tornado one more often than not hurts experienced players more than it helps. The next talent to mention is level 15, since you have this Giga Urn, this is one of the little changes between Quasvex Invoker, that transition and the normal Invoker. Having the shorter Cold Snap is way better than another Forge Spirit for you, so that is a no-brainer. While EMP was not used often, in this fight we will see two big reasons for it to be the spell that he goes for. The first one being that Sumeo is pretty low in mana, and the second one is Terror Blade, after the level 3 ult got nerfed, relies decently on mana, so EMP is actually pretty strong against him. This tornado buys time after the RP, and look at the angle of his ice wall, allowing the Necro to disengage from the Terror Blade as well. Unfortunately, Sumeo overextends a little bit, and the Terror Blade had ages anyway, so not the greatest fight for him at the end. This is a crazy fight that almost wins Sumeo the game. Note that since Pugna is the only showing, Sumeo only commits the Cold Snap with no Tornado EMP. Even without the urn, the Phoenix procs the Cold Snap instances and they get the kill. The fight keeps evolving and he tornadoes and uses the Ice Wall as they have to disengage from the Terror Blade. He buys back since RP was used and they can lose their base. And note how he invokes spells in the fountain that he did not use and runs with Wax to the fight together faster. He ends up getting two Spirit Vessel charges, takes Cold Snap instead of the EMP, and that is a dead Terror Blade. Terror Blade buys back to defend top, and this is the beginning of the end. Dire goes for another push, and Sumeo cannot show because RP is a huge problem for them since he has no buyback. You can see that he has Meteor plus EMP learned, and what he wants to do is dish as much damage as possible while also using Defeating Blast to stop the heroes from attacking the egg, punishing people that stays there because of the EMP. Unfortunately, the BKBs on the Dire do not allow that to work very well, but look how he understands the danger. With those BKBs, he cannot do absolutely nothing, so he disengages as soon as the spells are used. When Tiny re-engages, he is not a target, he is well positioned, and the Cold Snap plus Spirit Vessel finds a kill. Because of the talent, he has another one ready, and Terror Blade is forced to disengage. Because they have a small window of backdoor protection, he goes back to the fountain, he regions, and at the end, the Sunstrike plus Tornado ends up fighting more kills, and it's time for Radiant to start forcing towers. And this is the first time he actually goes for the Ghost Wall gank. Not only because he knows that Dyer is not expecting it, but because Dyer has a lot of dead heroes, and if he can find one, it's very unlikely that there's also going to be another hero there. Unfortunately, there was, he dies, but it sets up Radiant to get two lanes of Barrett's. Surprisingly, the game does not end here. There's still 20 minutes of game left, and I would love to leave it here for you guys to watch it, but people hate it. So, since this game is quite interesting, there will be a part two of this dropping tomorrow. As always, guys, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know how passionate I am about Dota, and I've been trying for a long time now to find gigs in tournaments with very little success. I appreciate the feedback in the video, but if you can start watching my streams and casts, I really appreciate it. I think I'm getting better, and I just want to find a way to get involved in the talent scene, and without proper feedback, it's going to take more time, I guess. You can find me on Twitter, where I always talk memes and Dota, and Twitch, where I cast and play Dota sometimes. Amazon Prime subs are always appreciated. We also have an Instagram and a Discord channel that you can check in the description. And yeah, guys, thank you. Hope you're having a great day. Bye.